Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. My name is Dan Fugate and I serve on the staff of the Indiana Kentucky Synod. It is my honor and privilege to share in God's word with you on this seventh Sunday of Easter, May 29th, 2022. I bring you greetings from Bishop Bill Guffian, from my colleagues on the Synod staff, and from the congregations, campus ministries, camps, and other ministry centers of our Synod across the state of Indiana and the Commonwealth of Kentucky. I invite you to join with me now in prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, form the minds of your faithful people into your one will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. There are two readings for uh, this day. The first is from the 16th chapter of Acts. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. And then the Gospel is from the 17th chapter of St. John's Gospel. Jesus prayed, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that we may be completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, 
but I know you, and these that you have sent me. I made known your name, and I will make it known, so the, lo the love which with you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to and peace from God our Creator and from our crucified and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, when I was the pastor of our Savior Lutheran Church in Madison Heights, Michigan, we had decided to merge with Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Royal Oak, which was just a few blocks away. This was the morning of our first joint worship service at Good Shepherd, and I was a little nervous because I wanted everything to go well, and of course I wanted to make a good first impression. So I went to Our Savior early to go over my sermon since I was preaching. It was the third Sunday in January, so it was extremely cold outside, but when I got in my office, I took off my coat and I put it on my chair. Before I knew it, it was time to leave for Good Shepherd. In fact, I was running a little bit late. That made me even more nervous. And so it occurred to me that I should probably put some signs on the doors just in case somebody um, were to forget that we were worshiping at Good Shepherd that Sunday. So I made some signs and I went to put one on the glass doors off of our parking lot. I stepped outside and I taped the sign to the door. And that's when something else occurred to me. My keys were in my coat, which uh, was on the chair in my office, and the door that I had just taped the sign on was locked, and I was outside. And I knew that all of the other doors were locked, and I knew that my car was also locked. I knew that if I tried to walk to Good Shepherd, I'd be pretty cold, and I also knew that there was no way that I could get there in time. Well, in our first reading from Acts, uh, we hear about a locked door. In fact, we learn about the opening of a locked prison door and about opening doors that we sometimes want to keep closed. We're told that Paul and Silas were going to a place of prayer and they met up with this young girl who was possessed by a spirit and who apparently was pretty good at fortune telling. She was following Paul and Silas around and saying, these men are servants of the Most High God. They will, can tell you how to be saved. Paul gets annoyed. Uh, the Bible says very much annoyed. And so he orders the spirit to come out of her and it does, but her ability to tell fortunes also seems to vanish. And that's pretty upsetting to those who are making money by her fortune telling. So they drag Paul and Silas into the public square so that the authorities can hear their complaints. And they tell the Roman officials that Paul and Silas um, are advocating customs that can't be accepted or practiced by Romans. The crowd joins in and the officials order that Paul and Silas be beaten. They're then thrown into jail and they're put under tight security. Paul and Silas are put behind a locked door. Now, they are Roman citizens, so that means that they're really not advocating anything unlawful, and they shouldn't have been beaten or put in jail, and their citizenship should have opened doors for them, not put them behind a locked door. We're told that despite this injustice and being beaten and locked up and having their feet put in stocks, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God even at midnight. Their trust in God is not diminished one bit. Then there's this earthquake and the prisoners are able to escape and the guard sees that the locked cell doors are open and he decides that he will kill himself because the punishment for being on duty when a prisoner escapes would have been death. But Paul yells to the guard, don't hurt yourself, we're all here. And the guard just can't believe it because they are. And so he asks Paul and Silas, what do I have to do to be saved? And Paul tells the guard about Jesus. And the guard and his entire family are baptized. Although Paul was the one locked behind a prison door, he was free in Jesus. And while the guard was not behind a locked door, 
God used Paul to open the door to Jesus for the garden and his family. The reason that's important for us to hear is that God wants to use us to open the door to Jesus for others. God calls each of us through the waters of holy baptism. God calls us through God's word, through the sacrament of Holy Communion, through the uh, gathered community of faith, to live bearing witness to what we know to be true, that Jesus rose from the dead, that God loves us with a love that is stronger than death, that God comes to us in this world with unconditional love and acceptance. God calls us as disciples of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit as we gather together as the church to be a community of grace, joy, and peace so that God's healing and love and hope can flow through us out to the world. In our gospel, we hear Jesus praying for us. It's kind of incredible if you think about it. Jesus isn't completely removed from us far away somewhere. Instead, Jesus is praying for us, and he prays that we might all be one. He's not talking about just something on the surface that sort of looks good. He's not talking about us being in complete agreement on every issue. Instead, he's praying for a oneness among his followers that's like the oneness that holds the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, together. Jesus prays that we might show God's love to the world, and he's talking about the kind of love which he himself lived. Jesus loved others without limits, without compromise, without conditions. Jesus loves with a love that seeks no gain, a love that defies logic, that ignores rationality and confounds common sense. It's wonderful to be on the receiving end of God's love because it's so awesome and complete. But in Jesus' prayer, he prays that we might show God's love to one another and to the entire world. If you've paid any attention to the news at all, it's not hard to be shaken and heartbroken and dismayed by the senseless shootings of children and adults at Robb Elementary School in Texas this past week. One of those murdered was an eight-year-old, Uzziah Garcia. His grandfather said this of Uzziah. He said, he was the sweetest little boy that I've ever known. That's heartbreaking. Earlier, there were people murdered by gun violence as they did their shopping at a grocery store in Buffalo, New York. I certainly don't want to argue politics, but I will assert that we do have a problem in our country. Jesus prayed that we would be one, and people who are one do not murder each other. Jesus prayed that we would live in his love, and people who live in the love of Jesus do not murder one another. The more that we enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ, the more that we let the love of Jesus fill us, the more we can find the power to love others with a more Christ-like love, the more we can become one, the more we can see one another as children of God. The more we enter into relationship with Jesus, the more his love will permeate every aspect of our being so that we can love one another as Jesus has called us to do. My friends, it's only the love of Christ that can change our world and bring us together as one people who can live together in safety, peace, grace, and love. It is only Jesus who can help us see one another not with differences, but as one, as people called by Jesus, as people created by God and loved by God. God has claimed and chosen us to share the good news of Jesus with others. Jesus prays for us and binds us together as one in his love. And we are called to tell people that God is alive, not just in our congregations, but in our lives. 
and that our lives can be different. They don't have to be filled with hate and violence and judgment, but they can be filled with the acceptance and the love of God. We are called to open the doors and share the good news that all are welcome. All are welcome and all are loved by God. Well, just to finish off the story I started with, because you might be wondering, when I was standing in the cold, locked out of the church building, I walked around to the front doors and someone had forgotten to latch one of the doors on the inside. And so when I tugged on them, they opened right up. Sometimes God has already unlocked those doors which we think are locked. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy God, make your people one as you and your Son are one. Extend the gifts we have been given by your Spirit to all people, especially those experiencing division or questioning your love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make worthy the work of scientists who look to the stars and planets, as well as scientists who look to atoms and molecules. Bring innovation and well-being to humanity through their discoveries. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep in our minds those who have died in war, both military and civilians, especially those in Russia and Ukraine and in other places throughout our world. May we honor them by seeking peaceful solutions to the conflicts that arise among nations and peoples. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant freedom to all who are overwhelmed by chronic illness, depression, or constant worry. Open them to receive health and salvation in Christ Jesus through the Spirit's gift of faith. We lift before you now, O oh God, all those who are in need of your healing touch in body, mind, or spirit, and we lift those to you either silently or aloud. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Stir imagination and understanding throughout the church in the work of poets, theologians, and hymn writers. Lead us into new visions and fresh, fresh expressions of your presence. We pray this day especially for our presiding Bishop Elizabeth, for our Bishop Bill, for pastors, deacons, for lay leaders, for all the baptized. We pray for our congregations. We pray for all those who are touched by your love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Unite us with the saints who have died and been raised in Jesus. Train us to wait with eager longing for Christ to come again, even as we sense his presence with us now. O oh God, we remember those who have died in senseless acts of violence. We remember especially those at Robb Elementary School, those in Buffalo, New York. The list goes on and on. God, we ask you to be with their family members, be with all those who grieve. We ask that you be with us, O oh God. Help us to not grow insensitive to this problem that we face but help us to be one in your love that we might be able to work towards some sort of solution, that we might be filled with your love so that we can uh, be filled with your love so that we might be able to uh, reach out to one another and accept one another and welcome one another and love one another as you have called us to do. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now this blessing. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless us now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace, tell what God has done. Thanks be to God.